ignition troubleshooting on these older 100cc type engines. Pretty basic in operation and the same principles apply to this black PVL type, the 105458. So some basic anatomy. First you've got your satter or stator which goes on the outside here. Then you have your rotor inside here which is uh, bolted onto the crank. Spins with the crankshaft of course. Coil lead, low voltage from the stator to the coil. These break a lot, um, usually around this bend here or here, or they break at the spade connector. They break in all kinds of places. So this is one of the first places that I tend to look for if I've got an ignition problem. Um, you'll measure the resistance across these two terminals after disconnecting it. Also, you'll notice that the terminals are different sizes, so you can't get them mixed up, at least not without uh, trying to hammer Another thing that causes problems a lot is a poor ground. Uh, this part of the coil, this C part, has to be grounded well or it's not going to spark. Often, the coils are mounted in rubber. Rubber mounts which offers absolutely no ground. In those cases, you need a pretty substantial earth wire like this one to make sure that you have a good ground. So, if you're troubleshooting, again, I would undo that bolt. Make sure all the contacts are plenty and clean. There's good clean contact between those. And also you can see that this connector as well also has to be grounded. So ground all of these together to the engine in one way or another. This cable on top here is a ground for a kill switch. Uh, I've never seen them hooked up actually. Um, certainly not on direct drive engines, but nonetheless, it's there, that's what it's for. Um, maybe they're hooked up on the Jika engines with the clutches, but another thing that's useful to know is that this high tension coil lead right here screws out and is replaceable. And of course, as you can imagine, that is a common failure point either from mounting around in the wind, getting pulled in transit, or hit by the elbow of the driver up here. Talk a little bit about the spark cap. So in this case, you might be able to read it. Um, long story short, this is not a resistor cap. One thing that, that's important to keep in mind is that you only have one resistor in your circuit because plugs also come with resistors in them. And on NGK, that's denoted by the letter R. Or when you see it in its model or up here, it's not racing, it means resistor. It's a resistor plug. Do not have a resistor plug and a resistor cap. One or the other. And that catches a lot of people out. So always take a look at your cap. See if it's resistor or not. Typically they're not in carts. And then your plug, of course. Most plugs are resistor plugs. I haven't actually seen a B10 EIX, which is what its designation would be. And that's about it. There's not a lot more to them. This PVL system doesn't really spark until about 450 rpm um, that seems to be the first signs of a pulse coming from them. the motor plots the red ones which are older kind of up until 95 or 93 engines they tend to spark at like 150. Um, a little trick sometimes sign of a spark um, outside the engine is not necessarily a sign that it's sparking on a compression so one trick you can do is take an old plug and open up this gap to about four or five millimeters. And that'll give you a, a better indicator of how well it's sparking. It's not 100% scientific, but it'll give you a rough idea on whether it's able to jump that gap or not. And it's gonna make it easier to see the spark too. And um, another tip is that you can affect your advance and your spark with different number of windings in these statters. Like there's, if I recall correctly, there's an 1850 winding and something like a 3600 or something like that. It's another tuning item, it's really a nuance. It's not a big thing, but it's another thing that you can tweak with. Ignition advance on these engines is usually set and measured by millimeters before top dead center. Um, that number varies on a, a series of different things. It's gonna depend on the length of the, the con rod and it's gonna depend on the stroke. But for something like this, which is a more or less 50 by 50, um, you can come in 
super conservative at like 1.8 millimeters before top dead center is super safe. Depending on the track and your fuel and everything else, you could go as much as 2.2, maybe even 2.4, but I would certainly not start there. So, you know, if you're new to these engines or you just want to hold together for a while, set out 1.8 letter book and don't mess too much with it. That's my two cents. Ba-ding!